Welcome to this talk, how to solve an engineering problem. Engineering is the application of science to the optimum conversion of the resources of nature to the use of mankind. Engineers make things happen. On solving, an engineering problem differ from simple high school exercise on science tutorials. This presentation was developed for university engineering students and is also relevant to young professionals and researchers. How to solve an engineering problem in six basic steps, starting with a sketch, developing the solution in symbolic form, checking the dimension and the limits, before solving numerically with the correct SI units and checking our results. These six steps will be illustrated with an application for a vertical sluice gate. Example of vertical sluice gate shown on this photograph here. We are considering a vertical sluice gate installed in a smooth horizontal rectangular channel, 3.4 meter wide. The flow rate is 5 cubic meters per second. And the water depth upstream and downstream of the gate are respectively 2.5 meters and 0.219 meters. We need to calculate the force acting on the gates. First, we need to make a good sketch. Making a good drawing does help to get a clear picture about what the problem is. Students, at an exam, a good sketch will give you some credit even if you cannot complete all the questions. So let us start with our sketch with the channel invert or channel bed, the vertical sluice gate partially opened on the water surface upstream and downstream of the gate. We can further detail our sketch by introducing the control volume and looking on the horizontal forces acting on the control volume, the upstream hydrostatic pressure force, the downstream hydrostatic pressure force, and the force of the gate on the water. Not here, that we show only the force acting on the horizontal x direction, but all our quantities must be given with a symbol. Then we solve as far as possible in a symbolic form. And we need to state clearly the relevant principle on underlying assumptions. Students, this step differentiates a professional engineer from a high school student. So here, let us start by stating the first basic principle we'll use, the equation of conservation of mass, which states that the discharge, PQ, equals the velocity V times the water depth D times the channel breadth P. And this gives us a relationship between the velocity upstream and downstream of the gate. The second basic principle is the equation of conservation of momentum, stating that the rate of change of momentum flux equals the sum of the force applied to the control volume for a steady flow. And if we consider our control volume, the application of the momentum principle in the horizontal x direction gives us an analytical expression for the force on the gate. We now need to check that our result is dimensionally correct. We need to check carefully for all dimensions and units. So here, we have an expression with three terms. Let us check at the three basic dimension, mass, length, and time for all three terms. And as we can see, all the units are the same for all three terms. That is good. Then we need to check for physically meaningful limits to make sure that our result in a symbolic form makes sense. So here we are going to slightly rewrite our expression and check the limits for a very wide channel, a very narrow channel, for a very high water depth on what's happened when the density increases. When we have a very wide channel, the force turns to infinite, as expected. When it's a very narrow channel, the force turns to zero. Again, this is what we expect. When the water depth upstream of the gate turns to infinite, the force on the gate should turn to infinite exactly as we expected. And with a higher fluid density, we get a larger force. Importantly, any consideration on the limit must take into account the basic principle of conservation of mass. Now, we can insert the numbers and solve numerically with the correct units. Here, students, 
be meaningful in the number of digits. In engineering, we typically use two to three digits. So here, we obtain a result of a force of 72.6 kN. While the result is present with two to three digits, remember that the complete calculation must be performed with a greater accuracy. Now, we need to ensure that we proper, provide the proper SI units. Students, at an exam, a numerical result without units is worthless, zero marks. We also need to ensure that we're using units in the international system of units, SI units. In 1999, the Mars climate orbiter crashed because the mission controller thought that the measurement was in meter, but the superior forgot to convert the measurement from imperial unit to SI units. So here, our result is expressed in kilonewton. The force is typically expressed in newton or kilonewton. And as a reminder, one kilonewton is 1,000 newton. Then we need to check that the result is physically meaningful. This is, again, something that will differentiate a professional engineer from a high school student. How can we do this? Let us check a simple case. What's happened if the shoes gate is completely closed? And we have an upstream depth, D1, 2.5 meter, and the downstream depth, D2, 0.219 meter. In this case, the force acting on the gate is a resultant of the hydrostatic pressure forces, which give a force of 103 kilonewton, which is the same order of magnitude, as was slightly different, than when the gate is partially open. And the difference is consistent with the change in momentum flux to counterbalance the difference in pressure force. So in summary, to solve an engineering problem, start by making a good sketch, solving as far as possible in a symbolic form, checking that the result is dimensionally correct, make sense at the limits, before inserting the number on using the proper SI units, on checking the result. This approach was originally developed by Professor Peter Nielsen in fluid mechanics and expanded by Professor Hubert Chanson in open channel hydraulics. The application is based upon material that is derived from the textbook shown on the bottom right. Additional references are listed here, as well as some YouTube videos including on the Sluice Gate. Thank you very much.